<laughs> Guess what, guys? We've got an, uh, a couple more guests on here today. I'm so excited, man, to have them on here today. We have Joe Thomas and J.D. Miller with Hope Rally, and they are outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Let's welcome them on uh, today, and we want to hear from them, don't we? We want to hear what God's doing in their life, and how you guys doing today? We're great. Man. You doing good? Hey, man, uh, so tell, us, tell me exactly where you're from. I'm right outside of Louisville, Kentucky. This guy here, he's from Lexington, Kentucky, which, you know, we're rivals, right. as you can think, you know, <laughs> right. Cardinals or versus Cats. You're SEC time especially. Yeah, yeah well, except wow. for we got booted out. So I'm just saying it, it happens. I wasn't going to bring that up, but since you did. <laughs> there you go. Well, hey, you know, uh, I've seen this. I love that name, Hope Rally. Uh, real quick, can you tell me just a little, uh, you know, quick story about uh, what is Hope Rally and how that got started? Yeah, Hope Rally um, is an organization that is to bring hope awareness and to show people how to overcome addiction, mental illness and trauma, which I personally have experienced in my own life. Sure. Wow. Well, um, you know, Hope Rally, you know, that, that sounds like a, it's almost like a revival, man, to go out and have a rally for hope, you know, and just bring people out and give them this hope because we know Jesus is our blessed hope. Absolutely. Uh, I really do love that. Uh, you know, I heard you got a good testimony. I heard you've been through some things. Yeah, come I on. heard God's pulled you out of some things. Amen. 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 You were in the fire, and he showed up, didn't he? I sure did. Can you tell us a little bit about your testimony, what God has done for you in your life, and how you got started in ministry? Yeah. Okay. Um, as a young guy, I grew up with two addicted parents. Um, one was on alcohol, and one was on uh, cocaine, who then went to crack. Yeah. And, and so I grew up in an environment where that was acceptable. That's what... That's what people did. At least that was the way I grew up. And I grew up with a, a father that died when I was seven, and he was kind of my comfort, my refuge at the time. My mother got in an abusive relationship, and uh, she was abused and thrown around, torn apart, and I was in the middle of all this. Um, my mother was kind of like Jesus says to me now, and she would cover me up from these beatings. Um, so I went through all this trauma growing up as a young kid, and it really hurt me, and I had so much pain, distress, and I didn't know what to do with myself. Uh, growing up in this environment made it where I felt that this was the only way to live life. And I went around thinking that I had to be the man and had to be the one that had to help my mother through these circumstances. Right. So we're right. talking like first grade, I'm thinking that's the only way out. You know, as I get older, I, I developed um, what they would consider in secular psychology as mental disorders. I was even considered schizophrenic at one point. Wow. Um, and Satan was really after me. I mean, he was really after me. When they talk about seeing visions and things, that's what I did. Satan was trying to tempt me to go as far away from God as possible. Mm -hmm. Because as Jeremiah had it, it, when you read Jeremiah 1 and you see that he already had a plan and a purpose for his life. He said before he was formed, he already was called to be a prophet. Mm. So as Jeremiah had on his life, mm. So I did. And Satan knew that there was a call on my life. Yes. He did not want to let me get it. As I grew older, I ended up getting married and I got in a car accident and I got on pain medication. And what do you know, as soon as problems start to happen in my life, I became a heroin addict. Mm -hmm. And I had went on suicide attempts from the past where I'd been laying on the table and I was revived. They told me I would never live. I've been stabbed. I mean, I've went through the ringer of everything. And, and heroin addiction actually led me to want to kill myself. I knew I had a call in my life, but I saw no hope in the endeavors that I was going through. Wow. My marriage was falling apart. I was falling apart, and I was nothing. That's what I felt like. I was nothing. I was worthless. I had no worth at all in this world. And that's what people around me had told me that's what watching media sure. showed me. Right. That's yeah. what a secular psychologist told me, that I was nothing. But you know what? I went through all this, and I went through bad relationships after my divorce, which heroin caused a divorce, which ripped me apart. And even though I went through all these different things, God just kept reaching out. He just mm -hmm. kept sending people reaching out. And for a while, you know, I didn't want to hear it. I'm going to be honest. I didn't want to hear it. Sure. Just like a lot of the viewers out there today, they've probably seen this and heard it so many times. Oh, well, Jesus saved me. Well, uh, that's great, but it can't happen in my life. 
the thing is, is it can mm. and it will if you allow it to because but God doesn't stop. I mean, he is always after you. I mean, he was after you enough that he sent his son to die for you. So one day I was considering suicide. I was tired of everything. I'd already been divorced. I was a heroin addict. I had nothing. And I was homeless on the street. I literally had nothing at all. And I had somebody that just kept talking to me about Jesus. And one day they just told me, you know what, I think Jesus is calling you. And I broke down in tears because I felt the presence of God hit me. And when I felt the presence of God hit me, it was like a change mm. in everything that I was to who God wanted me <laughs> to be. It was automatically I felt that I had a worth and a cause and God had something so great for my life just from those words. That night I told them that night I was going to end my life. And Jesus said, no, you won't. Jesus said, no, you won't, because you know what? I have a call for your life, just like he's called so many of the prophets out of the word. If you look at the experience of Paul, I see the experience of Saul to Paul is the same thing as my life, is that light hit me, and I was blinded, and God started speaking to me. Mm. And Paul, it said that Paul went out and spoke immediately, and that was the same call upon my life. I automatically went to church, and it didn't take no time, and I was actually leading because God called me. And he told me to go for a purpose and a plan, and Come he put on. a worth inside of me, and he took all the pain and anguish that was in my life, and he took it away, and he said, you know what, I've got fire to burn away all the extremities, all the iniquity in your life, and he said, I have a purpose and a plan, and you know what, that purpose and plan, I'm going to drive you to something that you can't even fathom for your life, because you know what, I've called you for greatness, because I created you in my image. Amen. All right, now preach. <laughs> you just did a good job. Hey, <laughs> hey, man, that's powerful. So you were homeless, a heroin addict, and divorced. How old are you? 30. At 30. Young man. Yep. I'm 29. Uh, we're, we're still young, but I'll tell you what, man. You know, that just shows right there if God has a plan for your life. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Amen. Amen. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, he will condemn. I love that man about, you know, just how God really pulled you out. And, and you know, he will send somebody, won't he? Amen. He'll send somebody to tell you God's got a plan for you. Let me, let me ask you a question, um, not just through your testimony, but with uh, the Hope Rally. Why are you doing this? Okay, in the same element from my testimony where you see that, well, I was helping other ministers to deal with this direct issue. When I helped these other ministers to deal with this, I, I was... I actually got overwhelmed with it. And I was like, God, I need you to make a difference in these people. Honestly, I want to tell everyone there, this is the most powerful prayer to pray. But sometimes this is the worst prayer to pray because he likes, he's very likely to give you the same answer he gave me. I did. I called you. And, wow. And so... I automatically stood up and said, all right, God, what do you want me to do? It wasn't about can I, will I. It was about, God, here I am. Send me, as Isaiah 6 says. Mm. Lord, here I am. Send me. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I don't care if you tell me to walk in the fire. I'll walk in the fire. If i got to go out to the world where they're shooting people, I'll walk out in the world where they're shooting people. Because you know what? You called me, so I'm willing to step out in it, whatever you've told me to do. Wow. That's powerful. Uh, quick, quick question. How do you two know each other? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, J JD has definitely been a mentor in my life. He's uh, been professional. He's been in ministry for years and years. Um, he even created the jingle uh, for Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. It cost you 50 cents, right? Yeah, wow. it, really, it really did. Uh, hold on, let me get, no. You do it never better mind. than Peyton Manning, by the way. <laughs> uh, I, I probably agree. I probably do do it better than <laughs> no, Peyton Manning. Peyton, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. He sent me a t-shirt. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, you beautiful. know, and he created Nationwide is on my side. But when I was struggling, he was the one that really instilled that God was on my side. And I was going to give up ministry actually not that long ago. And this guy talked me out of it. And these are the good people you've yes. got to surround yourself with to change. Yes. Um, I do. I'll, I'll tell you why I'm supportive of what Joey's doing. I, yes, sir. I'm 61 years old. I, I have grandchildren who are, are, are in junior high and high school. And in the county where I live, I, I, I talked recently to the local sheriff who told me that in the last three months in our county, where my grandchildren live, 18 teenage kids have either taken their own lives or they've overdosed on heroin. 18. In our little county in Kentucky, you could not imagine such a thing. But this is not just in my county. It's epidemic. It's nationwide. This heroin thing that's coming in from overseas. And so Joey's trying to do something to reach my grandkids. And, and he can reach them where I can't. They may not listen to an old grandpa. 
but they'll listen to a guy who's been through it like you have mm. and like he has. And so Amen. I'm thrilled to get to be supportive of what you're doing. Wow, that's beautiful. And you were also a member of the Gaithers, right? The gospel group, the Gaithers? Very blessed to be with the Gaither Vocal Band for about 13 years. About 13 years. They seen a lot of things. Amazing people. Uh, Bill and Gloria Gaither are two of the most generous, humble people I could, I, I've ever met my whole life. Uh, praise God. And from right here in your little little, little burg of, in, of Indianapolis. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? It is great. Man, well, that's amazing that, you know, God has partnered you guys up. And I see big, I just see big vision on both of you, uh, on the both of you. Just what God's going to do through this. And we know that he's going to open up many doors, isn't he? Amen. And we believe that. Let me ask you this. For this, for your ministry, um, and where you believe God is taking you, what exactly do you need? What, what do you need um, as far as, do you need partners? Um, uh, what, what do you need to, to make this vision come forth? Okay, um, we need lots of things. We want churches to partner up with us. Um, number one, our goal is to partner up with ministries and churches all over the country, and that is to work together as one body to accomplish one mission, to save the lost. If we don't focus on the Great Commission we've lost, what Jesus was telling us. As you think about it, the last thing that anyone's going to tell someone before they die is going to be the most important. He gave us the Great Commission. Number one is partnerships with churches. I want pastors, um, youth leaders all over the country to come in and partner up with us. Right. Tell um, them exactly what happens at a Hope Rally so they have some ideas. Yes. Okay. A Hope Rally, we bring in musicians, mm -hmm. we bring in speakers, uh, we bring in testimonials from celebrities, A to C list celebrities, that talk about what they've went through and how they got through it. And through these circumstances, we can reform and restructure their brain. I also talk about the process in which the Bible can restructure your brain and can help cure you from these elements. Just as I was cured, I, I don't believe that I just stepped out and I still struggle with the same issues. I believe that I was actually cured from Jesus. I think he really cures you from all the things that you have in your life. Mm. And so our element is we bring in musicians that are top-notch musicians. Um, we partner with different um, celebrities to come in and speak, to talk about their own testimonies. We partner with videos. We, and we bring all these in there, and then we have kind of like a sermon at the end. Honestly, it's, it's roughly a big concert that turns into a revival. Just as you said, like Hope Rally, it's like, it kind of sounds like a revival. It really is. It's to revive the state of this nation and where it is right now and put the spirit back in these people to restructure them and reform them for God and his kingdom. It's to instill a worth in people that has lost their worth. And also, we also offer Q&A at the end where you can sit back and you can talk to us and tell us, I'm going through this. How do we get out? And that's the point that we really need churches to be involved because when these kids say, I need an answer, they need a support group, and the church is right there for them. So uh, that's what we need is partnership from churches in a great way. Wow. Well, you hear that world? They need partners. And if you're interested, you can see that they have their website on the screen, their Facebook. You're on Facebook as well. Yep. And I believe God's going to do some great things through this. Let me ask you this uh, question real quick. What would you say to um, everybody out that's watching this right now? What would you say to the people to empower them through what you've been through? Like people that uh, are struggling. Uh, you, someone watching this right now, you could be struggling with drug addiction, heroin, uh, crack cocaine. I myself struggled with, you know, um, cocaine. Is there pill, Oh, yes. Crack. Lived in hotels, hotel rooms. And I thank God for TBN because it's an open door. But let me ask you, Amazing. what would you say to the people right now to give them hope? If they're sitting in a hotel room right now, if they're sitting in a house right now and they've, you know, hooked on drugs, what would you tell them? Number one, I want to tell them that you were created for a purpose. You were created for a plan. You were created in the image of God, number one. Number two... I want you to understand that you weren't just created, you were created for a purpose and a plan as you look in Jeremiah 1. So you were not just created perfect and for a plan, but he in Ephesians tells you that he's already prepared a path for you. A prepared a path for righteousness and something great. And not just that, I want you to understand that he loved you so much that he had to send his son here to die an excruciating death. As we look at the cross and the crucifixion, we understand what it took and the power 
that it was. And what that power does to us, I want you to understand that your worth was worth God to come down here on this earth to suffer through a horrible death, to be beat, to be broken, to be spit on because he loved you enough. Enough to be nails, to be driven in his hands and feet knowing what he was going to go through. Yes. Enough to understand that you were worth so much that he took his, your sin upon him. As a sheep, as it calls him, he took him as a sheep to die. And he took all your black sin and it put up on him and he died. Being separated from the father, being separated from the person he loves so much. If you really fathom everybody that you love in your life to be separated from, because for someone that spit on you, for someone that you yelled crucify when they brought you on the stage. Wow. If you look at the message that that is what you're really worth. It's not how much money you make. It's not what you can do in life. It's not who your family is. It's not even where you're at right now. You could be on a floor right now with a needle stuck in your arm, and I'll tell you right now, you are worth so much. There is no price to be paid for what you are really worth. The only price that could be paid was paid in full on the cross. Amen. As he said, it was finished. Amen. It was finished that your price had been paid, and I have a destiny yes. and a purpose and a plan for your life, and that yes. plan is so great. It's something that you've never, ever thought for your life, Tell that you could be great, that you could be the CEO of a company, on, or you can own a now. ministry, or you can be a pastor. You know what? Your, your worth is so great, and your destiny is so great that because I prepared you and I put it in your path, I will burn away your iniquities and everything that's around you. If you're struggling with finances, I will prepare the path of finances to come in your life. I will prepare everything. I will put everything in your life that you need and will set you forth on a plan of righteousness. Right. And I will sanctify you sanctify. and put you in the place that you need to go. Amen. So do not worry about what's happening because it says he prepares even for food, even for the birds in the sky. How much more did he love you that he created you in his own image that you have something great in your life. And whoever's struggling with that today, if you need something, if your local church can't help you with where what you're struggling with. If a counselor is not helping you to overcome, come to the website, check us out, give us a call, email us, and we will help you through the process because we believe that Jesus is the overcomer and because he lives inside of us, he will help you overcome all situations in life. Amen. Amen. That's Better go on ahead and preach now. <laughs> well, look, I'll tell you what, we are so glad that you have come up on the show today. That, and you guys, tell me again, you drove from Kentucky. Yep. A smooth ride? Absolutely. Oh, praise Somewhat. God. Well, listen, why don't you come back on, join us again. Thank you. Man, and keep doing what you are doing because I am telling you, God is truly done a good work in the both of you. And I just want to say thank God for you. And I appreciate all the music. You did the piano? Did you, uh, with, that with was the keyboard player. The keyboard the, player with, yeah. the, with the Gaithers? Yes. That's awesome, man. God bless you guys. May the you Lord too. cover you. Do not give up. Do not compromise because God has got a plan. We Amen. love you guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming Thank you so on. Much.